Sheriff Amos Guthrie sat down at his desk, hard at work on some last-minute paperwork, before knocking off. It was about 9.30, and the last two deputies had left not long ago. Guthrie had been happy to finish their paperwork for them, not minding staying late. This was one day he didn't mind staying a little later. Let the kids get off the road. Let the minivans and the station wagons get home. Guthrie would return to his trailer at the Happy Wheels Motor Lodge, polish off a six-pack, and go to sleep till it was time to do it again. He hated Halloween, hated everything about it, and it was probably because of what had happened last year. Guthrie. He looked up, hearing the haggard whispers and shuddering. It wasn't real. Couldn't be real. He had seen the man die. He had been there, and he had seen him die. This wasn't a Dickens play. He wasn't Scrooge. This was just his nerves riding high off the season. And he wasn't going to... Guthrie. Amos looked up from his paperwork, glancing around as he was certain that one of his co-workers would be hiding around the corner and playing a little prank. When no one popped out to laugh at him, he went back to his paperwork. He had the usual Halloween nonsense to write up. Petty vandalism, theft, some minor assault, that murderer they had caught after that nonsense. Guthrie! He jumped, banging his knees on the desk as he looked up to see a momentary flash of a familiar figure. He was still in his uniform, his hat cocked to cover the dent in his skull that Guthrie knew was there. The brim of his wide trooper hat did nothing to hide the burning eyes that were glowering at him. He was bent over the desk that had once been his, the two of them inches apart, and Guthrie was reaching for his gun when the specter was suddenly gone. Amos was left breathing heavily, his eyes roving like a wounded deer. Before he grabbed his keys and headed home, the paperwork would still be there tomorrow. Clearly, he was working too hard. He needed to relax some. He killed the lights, feeling like a little kid who was trying to make it up the stairs before the monster got him. And as he locked the door... He didn't dare look up at the dark office behind the glass. If Amos Guthrie was looking up, he would probably see a rotted, grinning face looking back at him. There were just too many damn kids on the sidewalk for him to shout and fall over the rail behind him. He was back in his cruiser before he dared to look up, and there was no grinning specter waiting for him. But... It did seem like he could see something lingering in the typing pool. Guthrie put the cruiser in reverse and carefully pulled out onto the road, wanting to escape this place as quickly as possible. As he waited for a pack of kids to walk by, he remembered what had happened last year about this time, maybe even while he'd been sitting at this exact light and watching a different group wander past. What's the matter, Guth? Not a fan of Halloween? That's what Sheriff Masterson had said to him as he waited for the kids to go past. Amos Guthrie, Deputy Guthrie then, had been on call that night with the big man himself, and the two had been having a pretty easy night till then. A couple of nuisance calls, some kids out helling, but mostly what they had been doing was a lot of sitting. Masterson had just been about to suggest that maybe they could head to the park and listen to Charlie Guthrie, someone he kept joking had to be some kin to the deputy, when a call came in about a strange happening by the East Woods. We heard screaming coming from the tree line. I can't imagine what anybody would be doing around that creepy old place, especially on Halloween. What the caller had been doing out there, the girl sounded like she couldn't be out of high school, they hadn't asked, probably out there with her boyfriend where no one was likely to find them, Masterson hadn't said before they set out. 
he bemoaned that they were going to miss the show, but if there were folks in the woods in trouble, then they needed to go have a look. Masterson got on the horn to Parks and Services as he rode out, but he'd been having trouble raising anything but static. We'll drive by the ranger station and see if we can't see what all the fuss is about, Masterson had said. Personally, Guthrie believed they were probably all drunk. Most of the rangers lived on site, and they were known to get a little stupid on the holidays. A couple of Fourth of Julys ago, one of them had nearly set the Southwoods on fire, claiming that something had been coming up to get them. He was doing time at Stragview now, and would probably have to answer to the Federal Boys after that. Guthrie didn't know, and he didn't much care. He had been in Kashmir for five years, half a decade, and he knew what he wanted. Masterson was an old man, still in decent shape, but not getting any younger. He reminded him of the sheriff from that show that his grandpa used to watch, The Rifleman, and he ran Kashmir like it was some mining town in dirt spit nowhere. Guthrie was not impatient. He could wait his turn to be sheriff, and among the deputies, he had the best claim. His range scores were impeccable, he had the best credentials, and he was well-liked amongst the community. Despite this, he knew he was not held in the good regard of Sheriff Masterson. The old lawman was nice enough, and he hadn't refused a talented deputy when one came and put in an application. But Guthrie sensed that Masterson didn't trust him. He was right not to. Guthrie was gunning for his job, but Guthrie could afford to be patient, and he wasn't going to put a bullet in the old man's back just to have something that he could campaign for next year when Masterson had his second heart attack or finally got tired of chasing kids with spray cans. Guthrie was a fan of the long game, and he would be here long after Masterson was in his grave. They left town and drove to the station, a large row house on the edge of the woods. They had set up in a place where the east woods and the west woods joined, and the lights were bright enough to see before they came in. Yep, Guthrie thought the lot of them were probably drunk as lords and stumbling around like fools. They would walk in, find out that the screaming had been one of them that had gotten lost in the woods, and they would have to go find him, because the people who were supposed to do that were too tipsy. What they found instead was an empty station, the lights on, the party spread about, but no one was home. Strange, Masterson had said, and then he suggested they go out to the spot the caller had talked about. Perhaps our dutiful rangers are in a bit of trouble. Guthrie had just shrugged and followed him back to the cruiser. Guthrie stopped his car again as a group of kids ran screaming across the road. He made eye contact with a harried-looking woman dressed as a cowgirl, but she only shrugged. She was wrangling more than cows, it seems, and the look seemed to ask him what he expected of her. It was Halloween, and the goblins and ghosts were wild. Guthrie grumbled as he drove on, the road clearing quickly. He hated Halloween. The two had driven to the edge of the East Woods. Masterson rolled the windows down, the better to hear the dulcet tones of whoever was in distress, but Guthrie heard little besides the wind playing through the pines and the faraway sound of night birds. It was nearly nine, the time when porch lights would be going off and the kids would be scampering home, but he had been in the woods long enough to know that something was amiss. Do you hear it? Masterson asked, cocking his head as he put a theatrical hand to it. I don't hear anything, Guthrie said, not sure what he was supposed to be hearing. Well, maybe if you'd grown up around here, you'd know what you were listening for. Guthrie bit his tongue, trying not to yell at the old man as he sat listening in the driver's seat. Little comments like that were the reason that Guthrie knew the old man didn't like him. It was always some snark about how he hadn't grown up here or how he wasn't from here. Guthrie could no more control where he had or hadn't been born than he could control when he emptied his bowels. The old man seemed to hold it against him for some unknown reason. That was how he knew that Masterson would never back him for sheriff. 
If he was going to win, he would have to do it on his own. Guthrie was about to say that the sheriff might need to elaborate when a scream peeled out through the woods. Masterson stiffened, listening to the scream as it wafted back towards town. Come on, he said softly, all the good humor gone from his voice. The two were out of the car in seconds, Guthrie with his service-issue Glock in his hand and Masterson with his bulky-looking Smith & Wesson revolver. The revolver was far from department issue, but when you were sheriff, you carried whatever you damn well pleased. Guthrie preferred the magazine capacity on the Glock, something he had carried when he was a beat cop in Clayton County, but Masterson always liked to talk a big game about the stopping power of the 45 slug. I don't need 15 shots if I can put him down in one, he would always say, a phrase that seemed to end the conversation whenever Guthrie brought it up. The East Woods were a place they had all been warned to steer clear of. They were the tract of woods that surrounded Stragview, and they were supposed to be dangerous. Marshes and strange topography seemed to run rampant in the East Woods, and people who went into them often did not come out. Masterson was, of course, not afraid of the East Woods. He claimed that he had something that would keep him safe, but even he didn't usually go running into the night. He was very brave, but headstrong, and it was something that would get him into trouble one of these days. Perhaps even tonight. Guthrie! Amos Guthrie jumped as he heard the voice crawl over his shoulder. He looked in the rearview mirror and saw the rotting corpse sitting in the back seat. It pressed its fingers through the holes in the back seat grating that separated the cab from the back seat, leaning in close so he could glower at him. You like taking my spot, Guthrie? You like sitting at my desk, answering my correspondence, driving my cruiser? Did you tell him how you got it, Amos? Did you tell him what you did to... A horn blared and Guthrie jumped as he slammed on the brakes. He had rolled right through a stop sign and was now nose to nose with a minivan and a very angry mama behind the glass. She was probably yelling something at him that the kids in the back seat wouldn't have heard on the Disney Channel and Guthrie checked the rear view as he backed up and let her head on. There was nothing there, but there had been, and he knew it. He turned on the radio as he drove, trying to settle his nerves before he ended up in the town paper for running someone over. Happy Halloween, everyone. This is Jonathan Marvolo, your eternal host on Mountain Radio 109.7. Static cut across the melodious voice of John Marvolo, and when Guthrie smacked the radio, he heard it come clear again. Damn fritzy thing. Tonight, we want to caution all of you to be extra careful as those little ghosts and goblins wander the street. Temporary Sheriff Guthrie has issued a statement to the public to report any crime straight to the station and that he will personally answer any emergencies tonight. Guthrie gritted his teeth. They just loved to throw that at him, didn't they? Temporary Sheriff Guthrie. They could have just said Sheriff Guthrie. Sometimes it seemed like the whole town liked to remind him that he wasn't of the town. Well, he'd show them. Next election cycle, he'd make it official. Then he'd be sheriff in title, not just in name. The radio crackled again, and Guthrie slapped it with his palm savagely. The voice that came oozing out, however, was not John Marvolo. This dedication goes out to temporary Sheriff Guthrie. Don't get comfortable in my spot, you son of a bitch. I'll be back, and hell's coming. Guthrie snapped it off and turned into the driveway of the trailer park he lived in. Damn it. He really hated Halloween. You're still here. Thanks for stopping by. Dr. Plague here. Always a pleasure to see all my new and old viewers 
coming by for another one of my spooky tales. If you'd like to support the show, you can always take part in one of our channel offers through Fume or Aura, or you can just click on another video when they come up. I'd really appreciate it. For our newer viewers, we also have lots of playlists and other things if you'd like to get caught up. I know some of my series have been going on for quite a while. If you'd like to get my latest book, there's a link down below that'll take you to my Amazon page. Towsy Homestead just came out, so if that's something you'd like to get your hands on, go ahead and have a look down there. If you'd like a signed copy, you can go ahead and email me from my email address on the site, and I'll get with you about shipping information and ship you a signed copy. If you'd like to support the channel in a more monetary fashion, we also have membership through YouTube, and we've got a Patreon that you can get the information for in the description. We have lots of tiers and everything to suit your needs. Patrons that support on the $10 tier, that's our Ghostly Reader tier, get a book anytime I write one, signed and on their doorstep. As you may have noticed, there's a list of patrons and members on the screen, and I'd like to personally thank every one of them for taking a hand in the future of this channel. Well, that's enough for tonight. Dr. Plague, signing off. Have a wonderful evening.